I spent two weeks in Japan, living in the most luxurious five-star hotels with an amazing ocean view, an Airbnb home in Tokyo with ridiculously steep stairs, and even a bathhouse hotel. But first, let's start with this capsule hotel in Tokyo. This is the one where most popular YouTubers go to, and it's relatively cheap, only about $40 per night. First, we checked into reception. So instead of a card key that they gave us, they gave us this sort of piece of laminated paper with a QR code, and that QR code is what we use to access our lockers. Inside a locker, I found a fresh pair of slippers, towels, toothbrush with a mini tube of paste. There were also complimentary pajamas to use, but I ended up just wearing my own clothes to my sleeping pod. Overall, in terms of space, you can definitely fit in a nice carry-on into your locker as well as a backpack and other clothing, but if you have bigger luggage, they also have a luggage room where they hold oversized packages. When I got into the pods, I realized the reason why you're not really allowed to talk there because it's not really that soundproof. You can kind of still hear the noises that people make around you. So when I got there, I tried to be extra careful not to make a lot of noise going inside, so I was kind of logging in silence, but there is a charging outlet, a nook to put your phone. Overall, it's more spacious than I actually anticipated. There's definitely more than enough room for you to do a bit of stretching. The size of the capsule is definitely, I would say, a generous twin size to a slightly oversized twin size bed. Moving on, the men's washroom and showers, I would say, are just okay. It's definitely better than your average YMCA. There is a bidet for all of the toilets, and the showers are pretty easy to use, but I would say in comparison to most hotel quality showers and toilets, it definitely leaves a bit to be desired because I wouldn't say it is as clean and you don't have as much privacy because you're using it with all of the men who are in uh, the various sleeping pods. Okay, moving on to a locally owned Mulan hostel in Kyoto. This awesome hostel is rated 4.5 stars out of 5 in Google. Now it says 1 star because there's a bunch of bunk bedrooms where there could be 8 people in a room, but you can book a private twin room, which is what we did. Essentially on each floor, you just share the bathrooms as well as the showers there. In addition, what really stands out is the location. So if you've been to Kyoto, there are really two locations that are super important to visit as a tourist. One is on the east side where there is the Fushi, Fushimi Inari Shrine. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then the second part is going to the bamboo forest in Kyoto on the west side with all of the cherry blossoms there. So that's where we were, and it's about a 15 to 20 minute walk right to the Kyoto bamboo forest. Moving on to the Ito bath hotels called Akazawa Onsen Village. So this is a series of chains of hotels that have individual private bathhouses for you and the hotel guests to use. It's a little older in design compared to the other onsens in the village. However, I really enjoyed the ocean view that we got and how spacious the room actually was for us. I would say the hotel shines not only in terms of the view for the room, but also the hot baths as well. Of course, there is a no filming policy because it is a naked hot bath where each individual gender has their own individual bathhouses. However, you are able to book private baths as a hotel guest. Now, I really lack the vocabulary to show you how amazing this bathhouse was, but just overlooking the ocean, as well as looking at the sunsets at night, having the hot water and shower areas and towels in the changing rooms, I would say this experience by far is what takes the cake for me in Japan. So the last part of our trip was the five-star hotel in Park Hyatt in Tokyo. 